Hi, I'm Raquel and welcome to My Virgo Kitchen. Today in My Virgo Kitchen, we're making olive and artichoke penne pasta. If you want to see how we make this delicious dish, keep watching. Let's get started. We have all of our ingredients ready, and as you can see, there are only a handful. Let's take a look at what we have here. We have marinated artichokes. We have Kalamata olives that have been pitted and halved. Grape tomatoes sliced in half. And we also have chopped onion. Penne pasta, of course. And we also have olive oil. Our water's boiling, so let's get our pasta in. Of course, we wanna salt the water generously. I'm using Himalayan sea salt, which is not nearly as salty as table salt, so I use quite a bit here and throughout the recipe, but it was not salty at all. So my pasta is going in, giving it a quick stir, and I want to be sure to come back soon to give it another stir to make sure the pasta is not sticking. All in all, the pasta is going to cook about 11 minutes or so. My pan's heating up, so I'm going to go ahead and give it a nice layer of olive oil. I'm using a rosemary infused olive oil, so you're actually going to see little bits of rosemary in the pan, but plain olive oil is perfectly fine. I figured why not use it, add the extra flavor. Check in my pan to see how hot it is, and I want to give it a nice little swirl to make sure the bottom of the pan is pretty well coated, and we can get our onions in. I'm adding the onions first because out of the ingredients that have to saute, the onions take the longest. You do want to get them to a point where they are just about translucent before you start to add your next ingredient, but you don't want them completely done at this point. I did a rough chop, so I'm being sure to break apart any little chunks that are stuck together just to make sure that the onions cook evenly and thoroughly. You want to give it a little salt and a little black pepper at this point because it's important to season in layers. So as you go along, you may want to add a little salt as you go. Again, I'm using Himalayan sea salt so it's not as salty as white table salt. Okay, we can go ahead and get our next ingredient in the pan, which would be the marinated artichoke hearts. You wanna mix them around, get them coated really well with the olive oil, and exposed to the heat. It's already starting to look delicious. I think we're good on salt at this point, but I wanna give it a quick hit of black pepper. I'll stir it around to get everything nicely mixed in. And then I wanna go ahead and check on the pasta. Just wanna make sure it's not sticking. It's looking good. Okay, now for one of my favorite ingredients, the Kalamata olives. These definitely add the most flavor to this dish. It's important that they spend some time in the pan. They don't need to be in too long, which is why they didn't go in at the beginning, but the flavor needs to infuse throughout the onions, the marinated artichoke hearts, and you'll see, even to the very end, when the pasta is mixed in, you'll still get that wonderful flavor. We have a couple cloves of garlic that I've already peeled, and I'm going to slice and add to the dish. This wasn't in the original list of ingredients, but it is something that I add sometimes when I make this dish and I decided at the last minute to add it. So there's one and here's the second one. If you don't have a garlic slicer, just slice it thinly with a knife. Let's move it around, get it all mixed in. And as you can see, it's already starting to look delicious. If only you could smell all these ingredients together. Now's a good time to decide whether you need additional olive oil. 
Remember, this has to coat quite a bit of pasta. So I've added a little more olive oil and I'm adding the tomatoes. The tomatoes only need to heat through. The skin will wilt a little bit, but that's pretty much that's needed for them to be cooked. After giving it a few stirs, it's time to check on the pasta to see if it's done. And then I'll give it a taste to see if it needs any additional seasoning. I added my secret ingredient, which you've probably seen before if you've seen any of my other videos, which is my Sazon Tropical. Now this seasoning is not a very salty seasoning. It does add a lot of flavor, but I did think it needed a little more salt and pepper at this time. Mix it all in. Okay, we're in home stretch. Let's check the pasta one last time. Looks like the pasta is ready to go. We'll get it draining and cut up our fresh herbs. First, we'll start with some fresh basil. Anything with basil and tomato is gonna be a winner. This is the perfect herb. And we're also gonna put in some fresh parsley. The combination of the fresh basil and fresh parsley give this dish a really bright flavor, a sort of freshness, if you will, and you can still capture some of those wonderful flavors if you use a dried uh, basil and a dried parsley. Um, of course, you're gonna always get a more robust flavor when you use fresh, but dried is better than nothing. Our pasta is well drained. Now we're gonna go ahead and add it to the pan. See, it's a lot of pasta, but we have enough of all of the other ingredients to coat it and flavor it perfectly. And then the icing on the cake, of course, is the fresh basil and the fresh parsley. It all comes together nicely. You really do have to mix it very, very well. The idea here is to coat the pasta as well as you possibly can to make sure you get all of the flavors in every single bite. At this point, we can add in our fresh herbs and we wanna mix the herbs in as well as we possibly can. We wanna coat the pasta with the herbs and the tomatoes and the olives and artichoke. The flavors will start to really come together at this point. Once you stir it all in, you wanna give it a quick taste to see if you need to add any more salt and pepper. As you might already know, once you add pasta to a dish like this, the concentrated flavors become a little less concentrated. So in this case, we needed a little bit more salt and pepper. A little bit more mixing. And we are done. From start to finish, this delicious pasta dish took no more than 15 minutes. The flavors are absolutely amazing. I like to top it off with a little bit of Parmesan cheese. And we're done. I hope you will give this delicious olive and artichoke penne pasta dish a try. Two out of the four people who live in my house don't like olives, but they love this dish. So I'm saying that to say it's not a dish that tastes like olives. It's a marriage of flavors that are simply perfect together. And I think even your pickiest of eaters will like this dish, if not love it. 
Make sure you subscribe, come back often to see some of the wonderful recipes I have planned for you to cook in my Virgo kitchen. If you want to see how we make our wonderful, delicious buttermilk crispy fried chicken, our cilantro lime rice, or our blackened mahi-mahi, there will be links in the description box below. Please check them out, leave comments, let me know how you like them, and let me know if you have any questions. Thanks for stopping by My Virgo Kitchen.